Ooh. Morning, everybody. Are we, are we awake? Yes. And those who came in early, King would told me that you had a lot of people registered for this discussion and this conference on Pan-Africanism for a New Generation. So I want to thank um, I want to thank the Oxford University African Society for their energy in putting together this discussion on Pan-Africanism for a New Generation. Yesterday, I had lunch with Kingwa, who you've just heard, who is the president of the African uh, Society. And I met other members of the committee. And what was so strong about it was that they were drawn from all parts of the continent, from Egypt in the north to South Africa and Namibia in the south, from Kenya in the east to Nigeria and Ghana. We did, we did note that we missed a lot of people in between from the Congo and Cameroon and so forth. And so we'll have to be doing something to ensure that we have more of those persons here so we build a strong community. The idea of this conference of discussing Pan-Africanism for a new generation is coming at a time when all over the world people are articulating changes about the 21st century. What is the 21st century? Where are we going in the 21st century? And in fact, probably the most urgent question for humanity is will we have a planet at the end of the 21st century? So if we divide the 21st century into four quadrants, I can see that the question of Pan-Africanism would clearly have to be reconceptualized and to highlight and to place before us the central question of Pan-Africanism, which was always there, but to re-articulate it. Central question of Pan-Africanism. <laughs> Sorry. Are Africans human beings? That's the central question of Pan Africanism. And that question, sorry, is related to the challenge of how can Pan Africanism, as an idea, a form of political mobilizing, reassert the question of dignity of the African person? and therefore the dignity of all human beings away from the ideas, organizations, and forms of economic organization that dehumanizes people. Because Pan-Africanism arose in response to the dehumanization of Africans. It arose in the period of the transatlantic slave trade when Africans were second-class citizens and were not human beings. And so every generation of Pan-Africanists have had to reconceptualize what it means to be humanized. And that is why your conference title is most appropriate. What will this generation do to rehumanize Africa and Africans and to rehumanize the planet Earth? Franz Fanon said, each generation must out of relative obscurity discover its mission, fulfill it, or betray it. So that's a challenge for you, very clearly. These words were written by Franz Fanon in the book, uh, in the chapter National Culture, in the book Wretched of the Earth. At that moment, Fanon, who was a medical doctor, an internationalist, a Pan-Africanist, a freedom fighter, from an area of the Pan-African world that is still not independent, and we have to raise the question of independence still, for Martinique, says, how can we fulfill the mission today so that we end colonial rule? At that time, they were fighting against forced labor, colonialism, compulsory taxes, exploitation and plunder. Are these conditions changed? Have we ended colonialism in Africa? No, we cannot discuss 
Pan-Africanism without raising the fact that in Africa we are still mobilizing around the questions of Comoros, French colonial possessions in the Comoros, around the questions of Diego Garcia and the imperial machinations that moved the people out of Diego Garcia and turned Diego Garcia to a military base, around the questions of the Western Sahara and how one country in Africa wants to join the European Union because it wants to colonize the Western Sahara. And so we have to continue to raise the question of the Sahara and so the issues of Pan-Africanism today joins the old issues of anti-colonialism, anti-imperialism, the dignity of Africa, and it raises those issues and we build on the experiences of those who fought to change, to get dignity. And the youths were always in the forefront of this battle for change. Whether it's the West, West African students, in the 1930s and 40s in this country, whether it is a student movement in the United States of America, in the civil rights movement, or probably the one that has registered in the whole world, the student movement in South Africa, where the students of Soweto made their statement in blood. These students built an alliance of students, workers, preachers, all forms of political organizations to isolate the militarism of the South African state and unleashed the possibilities for the transition to a form of society away from apartheid. That generation made their mark with great sacrifices. 